All right, boys, welcome back to another video. Nick's Daily here. Game two against the Philadelphia 76ers. We picked up a massive 104 to 101 win. In my opinion, this was the second straight game of the series that the Knicks should not have won, but they found a way to get it done. Jalen Brunson struggled. There's no question about it. He just hasn't been himself. The Sixers have defended him well all season, but he did knock down that three, of course, with a minute left. And if he doesn't make that, the Knicks certainly lose this game. But you got to give credit to Isaiah Hartenstein. He showed up big, played 30 minutes. He had an unbelievable quarter where he scored eight to come out of the second half finished with 14 had eight rebounds four assists four blocks blocked maxi at the end of the game grabbed that offensive rebound and kicked it out to of course dante actually it was to uh I believe it was OG and then he swung it and then Dante knocked it down. Guys are stepping up. You got to remember, these are second string. These are bench players that are filling in due to injuries. Of course, Mitch is back, but Hartenstein, ever since becoming the starter, the Knicks have been at their best. No Rando, which means that you're going to have Josh Hart stepping in. He played 48 minutes tonight. You could argue Hart was the best player on the court for the Knicks. He had 21 points, 15 rebounds, three assists, two blocks, two steals, gave 100% effort every second of this game i mean Hart came in via trade last season remember the knicks gave up a first round pick they also gave up cam reddish and it was one of the best trades honestly at the deadline in knicks history one of the best trades in the league i mean Hart has just been on a different level he's finally found his three ball back there was questions for Hart because he has been playing all these minutes nobody was playing more minutes than Hart in the second half of the season but four of seven tonight last game was great from the three line he's definitely going to keep it up and then dante divincenzo i wasn't sure if he was going to finish this game because Miles McBride had the hot hand but with three minutes remaining coach Tip brought him back in Dante was four of eight from three he had 19 points also two steals three assists Dante had an overall great game but the biggest difference from the Knicks of course now to last season is Dante they have a shooter out there somebody that just completely disrupts a defense you always have to know where he's at and because he's such a good shooter he can get a lot of wide open cuts because you have to play up on him you can also put the ball on the floor make the right read OG and Anobi, 10 points, 4 of 10 from the field. We know that OG is always going to make a bigger difference from the eye test versus the stat sheet just because that's the type of player he is. OG has not had a game this season where he's been negative for plus and minus, which is just crazy. He's on just a historic pace for the Knicks every single game when he's out there. The Knicks just seem to be winning. They're now, I want to say, 21 and 2 when OG and Brunson play and overall with OG they're I'm losing track to this point but what is it 22 and 3 I mean the Knicks just with OG have been playing some of the best basketball in franchise history and then uh, outside of that the bench tonight I thought played well I mean Boyan was 2 of 7 not exactly the greatest Miles McBride was 4 of 11 yeah just it wasn't exactly the bench performance that we saw in game one but it just didn't need to be because you got 19 from DiVincenzo you got 21 from Hart, 24 for Brunson, 14 from Hartenstein, 10 from OG. Every single starter scored over 10, and the Knicks down the stretch defensively got done. Of course, they were able to steal that inbound when it went to Maxi. They were able to get that block on Maxi. Overall, Maxi in the first half was without question the best player on the floor. And then in the second half, I'm not going to say he was nowhere to be found because he did hit that clutch three and he had uh, some mid ranges. But Maxi just down when it mattered, of course, uh, ended up turning it over, and then he got blocked, and he just wasn't at his best down the stretch. The Knicks in the fourth quarter are just, I would say, I'm not going to say they're the best fourth quarter team, I would say it's the Nuggets, but the Knicks are definitely top five, maybe even top three. Fourth quarter, they're always on the, the top of their game. I mean, there's just no way that the Knicks should have won this game. I mean, you look at the start that the Knicks had, 25 to 18, they were down. They were awful in the last first quarter as well in game one and it just it wasn't a consistent game for the Knicks they looked really good at times they looked really bad and then of course in the fourth quarter all of a sudden Maxi hits a three and Brunson misses a couple of the shots and then just for that three to go in that bounce that it took I mean I'm not going to say that things are going to go the Knicks away but when bounces like that do go your way it definitely feels good especially as a Knicks fan because it seems like those bounces haven't gone our way ever or at least in decades, but really for the Sixers, it's just been Embiid and Maxi. I mean, I don't really think there's even an argument for that. Like Kyle Lowry, I thought has, has played some high level basketball, but Maxi had 35, Embiid had 34, and then the next highest score was 10. Lowry had eight points, Ubre had four points. The bench for the Sixers had just 10 points. The one thing the Sixers did better was they prevented fast breaks. The Knicks just ran all over them in the game one. And then rebounding, the Sixers had 44. 
and the Knicks had 46, so the rebounding was a lot closer. I mean, the Knicks dominated the offensive glass just about, about as much as you can in a game, yet alone a playoff game. But, I mean, this was the type of game that should give the Knicks and Knicks fans a lot of confidence because if you can beat a team in the playoffs with your best player uh, and Jalen Brunson shooting the way that he did tonight, 8 of 29. Brunson was, was bad last game as well. The thing for Brunson is that, yeah, this was a bad game, but he did give you eight rebounds six assists 24 points a clutch three-pointer brunson also he just wasn't making the shots they normally does it's not like he's taking bad shots he's forcing it brunson's getting to his spots he's one-on-one -on -one. yeah there's a hand in his face as playoff defense but he's just missing shots that he normally makes and i'd rather him miss these shots in the first round at home versus potentially even on the road in the first round or of course in the second third or even the championship but i mean i'm just looking at brunson i'm saying that next game he's going to be back there, there's never going to be a time where i don't want brunson to shoot the ball or or, or swing it there was a there was a point in this game where, where Josh Hart was wide open, so he made the right read, but I mean, Brunson's always going to do that. He's never going to be selfish. He's one of the most unselfish players in the league, but there was a time in this game where I thought Brunson was just going to say, hey, look, I I'm going to have the ball. I'm going to take over, but he did swing it to Hart, and then Hart missed a three, but that's just the confidence that he has in his teammates. I mean, Josh Hart has just been unbelievable in this series, these first two games. He's been unbelievable since he was traded here, of course, at the deadline last year, but just specifically in the second half without Randall. Josh Hart's been on a different level, and he got that extension. The Knicks only gave up a first-round pick. I mean, yeah, they gave up Cam Reddish, but Cam wasn't even in the rotation. So they essentially gave up a first-round pick for Josh Hart, and that's going to be one of the better trades in Knicks history, especially if they can make a run. But this Knicks team, it's a lot similar to those, those late 90s, you know, 2000 types of Knicks. They're just so physical. They get after you. They make it tough. And the thing for the Knicks this season compared to last is they're winning games that they shouldn't be. That's something that last year where, where the Knicks, they lose a game and you look at it and you're like, okay, yeah, they lost that game. But this time it's like the Knicks last year would have lost that, but they found a way to win it. And the Knicks, they're, it's not like they're at their best. I mean, it's not like the Knicks are, are going out there and shooting the lights out of the basketball. They were 40%. 41% technically if you round up from the field. They were 33% from three. Free throw line, the Knicks were incredible. 19 to 23, you'll take any single day of the week. But this just wasn't a dominant game. Like the Knicks should have lost this game. I know I've said that three, four times at this point, but this was the type of game that I just didn't think we were going to be able to get. Of course, not going into it, but watching it just, it was one of those games where it's like, damn, the Knicks are just going to let it get away. But they kept fighting. They made the hustle plays. They knocked down the shots. They got the stops. They rebounded it. They got blocks. Uh, the Knicks had a good amount of blocks. And how many blocks do we have? We had seven blocks tonight that's just pretty crazy i mean the sixers did have six of their own but that block by hartenstein the offensive rebound i mean this guy remember i believe he's going into free agency yeah but the knicks have the rights to him but there's just no way the knicks should let this guy go i think the knicks should bring back hartenstein at all cost even if they have to overpay a little bit because the knicks have been at their best this season when he starts i mean if somebody has the stat on that look up and comment it down below the knicks record when hartenstein starts i mean is absolutely elite and there's no question they're at their best when he's out there. But Mitchell Robinson, he played 18 minutes. He had four rebounds, uh, plus two. Wasn't exactly the Mitch of game one, but they didn't need him to be. Other guys were able to step up. I mean, you know, Dante and Hartenstein and Hart, these guys were at their best. You could not have asked them to play any better. And imagine what the Knicks can do the rest of the playoffs and in this series when Jalen Brunson's on.